Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. On Sunday, we started looking at the story of Elijah, and I want to use the story of Elijah to illustrate a deeper point, that God's word is amazing. Whether we're talking about the earliest chapters of the Old Testament, the later chapters, or into the New Testament, there is a symmetry found in God's word that you will not find anywhere else. God's word is written over thousands and thousands of years, and yet it all complements one another, and it all has a, a, an impact on today. For everything that they were wrestling with thousands of years ago are the same challenges you and I are facing today. And Elijah is just one illustration of this common thread that is found throughout God's word as he tells this, this beautiful story that you are invited to be part of. So today, we are looking in Matthew. If you recall yesterday, we were at the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. And we learned that it was prophesied that, that Elijah would return and usher in this new time of the return of the Lord and judgment. Now what we have the, the benefit of is we know exactly what has occurred after the time of Malachi and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do we have an understanding of those events more clearly than, than the people in Malachi's day, we also recognize that Jesus' coming was announced in the gospel 2,000 years ago, and his return is when we will see judgment. So what Malachi was given a part of, we have been given the whole picture of. Now where does Elijah play a part in the, the coming of this, this new season, the coming of the Messiah? Well, that's found in Matthew here in 11, as we begin in, in verse 12. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. For before John came, all the prophets and the law of Moses looked forward to this present time. And if you are willing to accept what I say, he is Elijah the one the prophets said would come. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So Jesus is proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. Jesus is proclaiming that the Old, has, the Old Testament has passed and there is a new agreement, there is a new day dawning with the coming of the Lord. And John the Baptist, who was, was birthed, and we find that in the gospel message as well, as the herald of Jesus, reminding everyone to, to get their hearts right and to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And that's exactly what the prophets were referring to. Now, some might say that, is this the reincarnation of Elijah in John the Baptist? That's not what is being suggested. What is being suggested is the same same God, same purpose, same power is being poured out once again. The world is being reawakened like it was in the time of Elijah through John the Baptist. And that is what we have, have uh, witnessed in the gospel. And that's what we have now a better understanding of what the prophets like Malachi were suggesting. Continuing in 16. To what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance, so we played funeral songs and you didn't mourn. Hmm. So Jesus is taking a snapshot of the culture around his ministry 
around the birth of Messiah. And what he witnesses is it's full of complainers that are never satisfied. Can you recognize that same culture today? Everyone has an opinion. Everyone wants to be the, at the forefront. Everyone wants to be the star. And there's no one left to serve. And you know, when we, when we give up our humility and we become prideful, what else do we find? That there's no satisfying our needs and our wants. Nothing is ever good enough. And in Jesus' time, what Jesus is speaking is, the Messiah is here, but nobody has eyes to see or ears to hear because they're too busy complaining. John the Baptist shows up on the scene, and, and it's interesting for a moment, but they go back to their daily lives of, of being self-centered and, and trying to, to fill their own appetites. Jesus shares his frustration, and he is the Messiah, shown up in, in God incarnate, walking amongst the people, and he can't grab their attention. Certainly, Jesus empathizes with your plight as a minister of the gospel that you're struggling to gain the attention of the community around you. We serve because God has asked us to serve. We serve because we desire to bring a smile to our, our Father's face. We don't serve because we need to be seen or we want to be uh, you know, elevated to being righteous men and women of God. That's no better than what the world is seeking. We humbly serve behind the scenes as the extension of God's love, trusting that He will do the work needed to draw attention and prayerfully bring people into right relationship with Him. That's God's desire and that is the purpose of what we see from Elijah's time to John the Baptist's time to your time. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking, and you say, he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say, he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. We are not measuring our efforts by the world's standards. We are not listening to the critics of the world who say whether our ministry is successful or not successful. We live to please God and God brings increase. In Jesus' time, it was that nothing was ever good enough that John the Baptist was, was quiet and withdrawn and, and calling people to repent. And Jesus, on the other hand, was hanging out with sinners and uh, where the sinners would, would be found and neither were judged by the community as righteous. How foolish our culture has become when God's presence is everywhere and they are not able to see it because they are so trained to have a critical eye, so trained to complain and, and find fault in everything, then even when perfection stands before them, they can't see it. Let us not be as blind as this culture has become. Let us keep our eyes trained upon God and seek our purpose and seek God's plan and be satisfied with our part in his grand story. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. For, for without your wisdom, Lord, without your guidance, we would be caught up in the, the, the ridiculousness of this world. They go on and on just to hear themselves speak. They, they want to impress upon us that their opinion is right and no other opinion matters. You have something so much greater for us, Lord. But it requires us to, to quiet our, 
our mouths and open our ears and speak only the words that you call us to speak. You will give us the wisdom. You will give us the, the, the direction. It is you who we serve, Lord. We trust that, that through this service, you will reach our neighbors and they will be given the same opportunity to receive salvation and to know you as we know you. Lord, help us get out of your way and get out of our own way as we seek to become part of your family and accomplish all that you are asking us to accomplish. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, meet you back here. We'll continue to talk about Elijah and that thread that we find throughout God's Word to bring uh, kind of an understanding of of the word that God has been speaking throughout time and its relevance for you and I today. See you back here. Know that I love you and I miss you. And please be good. <laughs>